Let's go deeper. In episode 338, I talked about known versus unknown. And one of the elements in there that is going to dramatically affect the effectiveness of your marketing is your brand. My goal is to help, to help restaurant owners finally get to where they want to go. But more than that, my goal is to find entrepreneurs within that segment that actually know what it means to hustle. That's my goal. Come on the journey with me. Restaurant Marketing Secrets, episode 339. I'm your host, Matt Plapp, and we're brought to you by America's Best Restaurants. America's Best Restaurants is on a path to help you, independent restaurant owners, find more frequent customers. Why? Because infrequent customers don't pay your damn bills. And right now, your marketing plan is attracting infrequent customers, or should I say, your lack of a marketing plan. Sunday was a great example of what I talk about all the time with regards to money follows attention and how important impressions are no matter where they come from. On Sunday, my wife said, hey, what was the name of that restaurant that we went to? I think it was me, Cozumel, but which location was it? Because there's a couple and they're named differently on Facebook. And I said, I believe it's the Oakley one. And she goes, okay, I found it. Why? One of my friends wanted to go there, saw our Facebook post, and wanted to really go there and check it out. I said, cool. I said, hey, we're actually going there as a team on Tuesday. Do you want to go? She's like, heck yeah. And I said, you know what? Let's go tonight also. It sounds good. Game on. We went there Sunday night. And then again, last night on Tuesday. That, my friends, is what happens when your name is on people's lips, when they see your brand more often, when they see your emails, your texts, your messages, your Facebook, your Instagram, they see your sign, they see your TV commercial, your hear your radio commercial, no matter what it is. If your restaurant gets impressions, enough impressions build up and people make the decision to come to your brand. Now, that is, as I've said, assuming that your brand doesn't suck. Is your food great? Is your service great? Is your atmosphere great? Is it a place I'm going to want to come and spend my hard-earned money? And you might have that place that people want to go spend their hard-earned money. But if you aren't getting enough impressions, you're not going to get enough visits, which leads to infrequent customers. Let's talk about brand. Because that was part of episode 337. I talked about known versus unknown. And how the more known your restaurant is, the better. If you're unknown, (laughs) we know what that means. I was looking at our Facebook ads the other day. Right now, we are running Facebook ads across the country for our ABR Roadshow, as well as some of our trainings. And you can see our effectiveness based off of brand recall in certain areas. Because we get people applying to be on the show. We get restaurants nominated. We get restaurants that our team finds. And yes, it is a marketing program for some restaurants that, guess what, cost money. Somehow people are surprised by that. I don't know why. Because it's an advertisement. Like, for example, I had a guy the other day that applied and then left a a message in one of our, our chats that he got that he didn't realize it was going to cost money. I'm like, well, why else would we advertise a marketing program, and why would it not cost money? That's a different podcast. But we get these people that contact us. And about 73% of the restaurants that come into our world, whether we find them or they find us or consumers nominate them, are eliminated. So that leaves 27% are good fits for us to film and market the America's Best Restaurants Roadshow at their restaurant. We see a much better response a much bigger bang for our dollar in areas where we have had many impressions, meaning, for example, Michigan versus Texas. We have been filming in Michigan for about 14 months. We have filmed, if I had to guess, because we visit our, our game plan, is 50 restaurants per state every year that we film in. 50 states. Our goal, obviously, you can do math. 
2,500 episodes, 2,024 is the goal. But there's 50 states. We want to do an episode at 50 restaurants in each state throughout the year. Now, we know that some states, that might be harder. Some states, it's a lot easier. But Michigan, we have filmed, if I had to guess, probably in the neighborhood of 40 to 50 restaurants. Those restaurants, episodes, and the marketing that goes along with them, get somewhere around 100,000 views and engagements over the course of the three months when that happens. Then we have our own ads that we run marketing what we're doing. Go to the other side, Texas. We just started marketing in Texas about 30 days ago. We've yet to film an episode, I think. I could be wrong. We might have been in Texas the last couple of weeks, but we haven't debuted an episode there. And we don't have very many impressions. So it is much easier for us to get the attention of that restaurant in Michigan than it is in Texas. And it's much easier for us to come to a, a come to a agreement to film at a restaurant in Michigan than it is Texas because that Michigan restaurant has seen or heard about our brand for over a year and has seen the work and likes it. The one in Texas has no clue yet. Now in 12 months, they will have a clue. And that was the point of the unknown versus unknown. I had a podcast a few days before that called Seen versus Unseen with regards to maybe some of the stuff you're doing on your own that you shouldn't and the unforeseen circumstances of that. This podcast, 337, was about known and unknown. That the more well-known your brand is, the more better everything else will work. And so when you look at our advertising, and this is where I'm at a struggle right now myself. David Schlotter, our marketing director, and I met yesterday morning, and he's showing me the ad spend. And we were about $2,700 a day as of two days ago on our ads, and we have different types of ads. We do exactly what we preach to restaurants. We target an audience with an offer that's so good they feel stupid saying no. It's actually what the cover of Alex Hermosi's book says. How do you make offers so good people feel stupid saying no? Being featured on the America's Best Restaurants Roadshow screams credibility and your customers love it. The marketing we do behind it is fantastic and drives a bunch of engagements and all the good stuff that makes marketing the marketing wheel go round and round. But if you don't know about it yet and if you don't really care and if you don't appreciate it, that advertising falls on deaf ears. So when I look at our ads that we ran in Texas in the past 30 days, and I compare them to Michigan, they are not as effective. When I look at our ads, I look at our reach, I look at our impressions, I look at our engagements, I look at our clicks, unique clicks, through to schedule a call with us. I look at the people that clicked that scheduled a call. I looked at the people that scheduled a call that showed up. And I look at the people that showed up that said, heck yeah, Matt, we want to work with you. Or in this case, they don't talk to me. Heck yeah, Matt's team. We want to work with you guys. We want to have an episode filmed here. I analyze that whole thing. Now, if I only, if I only focus on how many people say yes, that can be a big mistake. And if I ignore the fact that that reach and those impressions and those engagements that do not turn into unique clicks, if I ignore those and write those off, I never get to the promised land that is Michigan. Because right now, I'm getting a lot more reach and impressions and engagements in Texas. I'm not getting as many unique clicks, appointments shown, and people that say yes. Well, it's the same with your restaurant. And a lot of you, I hear this all the time, a lot of you are confused by why does my social media page get no engagement? Why do my emails not get open? And when people open them, why don't they click and go to my website and order? There's a lot of variables there, but do not ignore the importance of those touches. And that is your brand. That is branding. That is part of it. Now, if your branding sucks, then you got a problem. If you're not always repping it, if the colors aren't right, if the logos aren't there, you know, if you got a different logo on your building than you do your Facebook and your website and your email and your text, you got a problem. You don't see Target look any different anywhere else. McDonald's Golden Arches is consistently the same since the 50s. 
you need to be the same, but you also need to understand and appreciate that what you put in front of the customers isn't going always to get that, that sale, isn't always going to get the customer to come in and buy a flaming fajita, a large pizza, a T-bone steak. And if you bypass the hard work it takes to get there, because like right now, I can look at our ads and say, man, we got $2,700 being spent. I really only see 1200 of this getting people across the finish line. It's easy to take that approach. But guess what? That 1200 is working better than the other 1500 because I spent that 1200 the past year and a half. Because we've had episodes debut the past year and a half. Because we've had hundreds of thousands of impressions in those markets the past year and a half. So I have to constantly remind myself, Matt, today's dollar is not necessarily for today's benefit. That is branding. Now, I won't say that is brand. That is a part of branding. And that's what I want you to think about. Two podcasts ago, episode 337, talked about known versus unknown. If we remain unknown by pulling the trigger on ads in places that might not be working the greatest, we will never become known. And if we never become known, that irresistible offer that people feel stupid saying no to, they never feel stupid saying no because they never get to the part of understanding the massive value that comes with what we're offering. It's the same with your restaurant. I can see a free burger over and over and over, but if I do not have an impression of your restaurant that is, I got to go there, I can't pass this up, then it doesn't matter. And if you don't push that on me enough over the course of a long period of time, it doesn't matter. My friends, that's all I got. I will see you next episode. That will be 340. So as you know, I don't charge for my content. We don't have sponsors. We don't have product placement in here. But what I want your help with is spreading the word. If you're finding value here, do me a favor. Share this on your social media. Share an episode with something that made sense to you, that's relevant to your restaurant, that you got value from, and tag Matt Plapp and America's Best Restaurants. Also, go to America's Best Restaurants on Facebook and on Google and leave us a review. Let us know the impact we've had on your restaurant with our roadshow, with our marketing help, or with our podcast. And last but not least, if you want to take the next step and help me out a lot and help us out a lot, text me a testimonial, 859-743-2408. That's my cell. A selfie video would be awesome about the impact this content or our company is having on your independent restaurant. But worst case scenario, just a few kind words. The way we can help lift this industry up is to help get content like this to more independent restaurant owners, and you are the key to spreading the word. I appreciate your support. Have an amazing day.